speaker is Dr. Julia, Julie Miller Jones. A board certified uh, nutrition specialist and licensed nutritionist, as a distinguished scholar and professor emeritus of nutrition in the Department of Family, Consumer, and Nutritional Science of the St. Catherine University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Is Jones is very interested in all aspects of nutrition science, but is especially interested in whole grains and food-based solutions such as the DASH diet. Okay. okay. I'm delighted to be here, and um, I did know Norman Borlaug because I went to the University of Minnesota and got my PhD there, and he would always come back and speak to the food technologies of the cereal chem meeting. So I'm delighted to talk to you today because I want to talk to you about um, gluten-free, and what if the whole world went grain on gluten-free, um, and that scares me. So I want people who need to be gluten-free to do it, but I don't want people to elect to do it. So I'm going to talk about today's environment and why everybody thinks gluten is bad for you. Um, a, a little about the paleo diet. Um, that's a completely grain-free diet, and there's group people who believe that um, we didn't evolve to eat grain. Um, I'm going to talk about the nutritional ramifications of these just a little bit and then some sustainability ramifications and I'm going to do it in 12 minutes. Okay, so this is why we're worried about gluten. We're worried about it because we're getting fatter and because we're getting fatter um, we have a lot of chronic disease and there are authors um, such as the one in this slide making all kinds of accusations about our food and particularly about flour. Um, uh, William Davis, a uh, uh, cardiologist with training in catheterization um, says that it's a poison and it's addictive and it's making us fat and Simmet developed it and Norman Borlaug is the evil person who did it. Um, uh, and the grains developed by gold are slowly killing you and we did not evolve to eat wheat according to the paleo. So this is the scenario and what makes me scared about this is if this happens in Europe and in, in the U.S., which it is, this book, some of these books have been translated into over 80 languages, um, that means that other people may do it too. So that's what scares me. Okay. All right, and then we have stars that um, say that they're thin because they eat gluten-free. We have people who win tennis um, at Wimbledon because they're gluten-free, and that makes everybody want to do it. And um, one of the uh, groups said that wheat is the new asbestos, and by the way, it's destroying your brain as well. So you all in here can't even understand what I'm saying. Okay, so who should be gluten-free? Um, and I actually know this because I actually carry the gene. Um, my sister has it, my grandniece has it, and my grandnephew has it. And because, I, because I'm in a family that carries the gene, my risk is 1 in 22. But the risk for average risk for you in the whole room is 1 in 133. Now talking about changing your mind, when I started teaching in 1970s, uh, it was 1 in 3,000. And a paper that came out in 2009 said that's wrong. And it's now 1 in 133. If you're from China, it's 1 in 235. If you're one part of North Africa, it's 1 in 22. So it depends on where you're from. But what do you need to do to get it? You need to carry the gene. So I'm at risk. Um, you need to eat gluten. I do that. Um, and what happens is then if I have a really bad diet, something can happen called, I'm going to get bacterial overgrowth. And the bacterial overgrowth in a really bad diet can cause the tight junctions in the intestine to open up. And this allows the part of the gluten peptides that should be broken down to go into the body when they shouldn't. So the tight junction's job is to let the nutrients go in and keep the stuff out that should be out. Gluten is a very hard protein to digest. So that's one of the reasons it is named as a problem. This once this protein is into the body, it causes inflammation. If you have celiac, what happens is in the pictures that you see here, this is, um, the top picture is the normal villa. You see those nice fingers. The bottom picture is a celiac villa. It's completely flat. Those people do not absorb food. Um, and it's also at higher risk for people who have um, gut symptoms. 
it is increasing. We have data from Finland, data from Minnesota, showing that all autoimmunes are increasing, and celiac disease is among them. So we're worried about that, and we don't know why. Um, there's these books that are paleo books. We didn't evolve to eat grain. We have cave data, we have cooking data, we have dental calculus data, where we have DNA showing that they did eat grain. In fact, why would anybody plant grain if um, we weren't going to eat it? It's a pretty plant, but it's not, it's not a flower, really. Um, and so people actually think that the eating of grain actually enabled the evolution of grain of the brain because we are the only primate species that has six copies of amylase and that um, that these carbohydrates to the staples they think actually allowed evolution okay now most while these books and many people in the population believe that carbohydrate is bad for you this runs counter but facts don't matter i just learned but it run um it runs counter to uh advice from nearly every dietary body that i can say which wants you to have carbohydrate staples at the base of the pyramid and make up 45 to 65 percent of the diet whoops um now i can't do this either here okay um and, and look, these are the Mexican diet, your Terry Guidance and Indian, they all have a place for grain, but I could do one from all over the world. What is the problem and the problem we have to address and we have to stop picking on dietary things that are causing the problem. The problem is us. We are eating too many calories. These data from the United States show that in 1970, we ate around 2,000 calories. In 2008, these are disappearance data, it's 2,674 calories. We're eating more calories, and we're eating more of everything. And it's not grain, it's not sugar, it's just plain too frickin' much. Um, <laughs> And um, William Davis says, as our grain intake increased, so did obesity. These belie the data. Um, developing countries, our grain intake is flat or decreased, or developed flat into or decreasing. And um, no matter what country we look at, whether we look at adults or children, obesity rates are going up. If they're going up because we're eating too much. But we're not eating the right stuff. Whole grains and grains are loaded with the right stuff. The Aliron, I love it, that's really loaded with the right stuff. So um, we get B vitamins, we get um, fiber, that comes from grain. And we get all these wonderful phytochemicals that are in the outer layers of the grain. When we mill it, we lose about 15 to 35% of the phytonutrients. So that, and we lose some of the um, other nutrients. But I will still argue that we need to follow the dietary guidance. And the dietary guidance says to make half your grains whole. And why? These are actual data on U.S. populations, and we're the fattest, one of our dubious achievers. Okay, so um, what, what you see here, whoops, I thought I was hitting the pointer, but... Anyway, this, the thing with the circle around, those people in the Framingham study, which was the big heart study in the United States, those people who made half their grains whole, they ate two servings of refined enriched grain and three servings of whole grain. They had the lowest visceral adipose. In men, I call it the descending chest. The lowest visceral adipose tissue, which is the one that's the most dangerous. If you look at whole grain intake eaters, they have lower risks of everything. Um, lower risk of diabetes, coronary disease, and I'm going to bore you with these, these numbers. No, so all these authors say they cause the disease. I can give you slide after slide to say we have, if you eat whole grains in the right amount, you have lower risk of coronary disease. You have lower risk of diabetes. We're worried about diabetes because it's raising um, so fast in the world. We have lower risk of diabetes. What these, this slide says is the one I want you to pay attention to is that our ratios are wrong. If you, have, uh, if you look at carbohydrate intake, that's not related to diabetes. Starch intake is, and the ratio of starch or carbohydrate to fiber. We're not eating enough fiber, and we're not eating enough whole grains, and that's the problem, rather than picking on carbohydrate or wheat per se. Cereal fiber is not the same as William Davis says in that it has, um, you can get all your fiber from fruits and vegetables, you can't. And so if you have celiac disease, 
you need to eat alternate grains. You need to eat amaranth quinoa because the cereal fiber does things that the other fiber doesn't do, and it lowers your risk of diabetes and overall um, death rate. Here's another one showing that cereal fiber is different from other fibers. And they aren't the same, and it, your poop shows it. Um, your whole grain intake decreases all-cause mortality. We're not eating enough of it. This is true in the U.S., and it's true throughout the world. 90% of us aren't getting enough whole grain. We're not getting enough total fiber. Um, and we're, we shouldn't go low-carb either. That actually increases your risk of all-cause mortality. Um, so why would you go gluten-free? You're going to go gluten-free if you need to. If you're allergic to wheat, that's 0.5% of the population. We've got 1% who has celiac on average. Um, we have this new kid on the block called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Um, if you have 40 gastroenterologists in a room, you have 50 opinions. Some people say it doesn't exist at all, and other people say 40% of the population has it. Um, some credible sources maybe think 3 to 4% physicians hate it because it's all kinds of murky symptoms. You know, you have foggy brain. I have it a lot. Um, you, you, you have gut problems. I have those too. Um, there are all these non-specific symptoms. Um, but you, it costs a lot more to eat gluten-free. It's at, in at least twice as much. Um, it is less nutritious despite what people think. Um, it's inadequate in B vitamins and it's particularly inadequate in fiber. You've seen this so I don't need to show you. All these grains do feed the world. They do provide important calories. And I just want you to see that we can't go paleo because if you look at the number of calories that green beans live gives you per, uh, or the amount of protein compared to wheat and maize, we just can't do that. Um, is another way of looking at that. The grains give you the calories that we need, so we can't all stop eating at protein. So, carbohydrates and grains are recommended in dietary guidance around the world. We need it. The consumption of whole grain and the right amount of fiber and the right amount of carbohydrate decreases your risk about just about everything, um, and they do not increase your risk, as alleged in these um, self-help books. Um, real cause of obesity is too many calories. Grain and gluten-free diets are not necessarily healthier. They're more costly, um, and we need grains and carbohydrates to uh, feed the world. And I have 20 seconds left. So we've got to consume. We've got to. We've got to convince consumers it's something they're not eating, and get them to change their ways and eat whole grains to protect their health. Thank you.